we shall explore the treasures found in the tomb of Tutankhamun in this vlog. We have discussed how the treasures of King Tutankhamun were discovered after years of search by the British archaeologist Howard Carter in 1922. We shall visit the tomb of Tutankhamun where these splendid treasures were found in the upcoming vlogs. I consider myself very lucky to witness these treasures exactly 100 years after one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. This is an intricately designed foldable chair used by the boy King Tutankhamun. Did I tell you that King Tut died very young when he was only about 19 years old? This is the footstool used by the king who symbolically crushes his enemies by stepping on them. These enemies are from neighboring kingdoms such as the Nubians and Asians. The foreigners can be recognized by their typical facial features, their hands tied behind their backs. The traditional enemies of the Egyptians were called Nine Bows, the nine prominent enemies of the kingdom. This is very curious. It is a board game called Senet played in ancient Egypt. This is Pharaoh Tutankhamun's personal set. This is a wood and ivory box which is decorated with Tutankhamun's image. His wife Anke Senamun is shown sitting near his feet. These sandals must have been worn by the boy king at some point in his life. The minute work uses real gold threads. This wooden mannequin of the king was perhaps used to hang his clothes and jewelry. The boyish face tells us that this is from his childhood. When Howard Carter first entered the tomb of Tutankhamun, the sealed door of the burial chamber was guarded by two statues of the king on either side. This is one of two statues of the king that were guarding the burial chamber of the tomb. It is made of wood covered with black resin and gold leaf. This is the golden throne of the pharaoh inlaid with precious stones and colored glass. The throne is decorated with many urii, the protector goddess Vajet, depicted in the form of a cobra with crown or the sun disk on her hood. The legs of the throne are made to resemble lion's legs. This is perhaps one of the greatest treasures in the world. In fact, each of the 5000 plus objects found in the tomb of Tutankhamun is wonderful and precious beyond imagination. The backrest of the throne has a mural of King Tutankhamun and his wife Anke Senamun who seems to be applying perfume to the king. This throne is approximately 3300 years old and is in a splendid condition. This is the shrine that enclosed a marble chest that held the canopic jars containing the internal organs of King Tut. It is made of wood plated with gold. Idols of protective goddesses surround the shrine on all four sides. As we have seen in the last vlog, during mummification, the internal organs of the king were removed and embalmed separately. This is the chest of the canopic jars containing the internal organs of the king. The lids of the jars are shaped in the form of the head of King Tutankhamun. This is the statue of the Egyptian god of mummification and protector of tombs, Anubis, depicted in the form of a jackal. This statue was found in the treasury room of the tomb of Tutankhamun, which also had a burst of the cow goddess Hathor and many chests containing the used clothes of the pharaoh. The statue was wrapped in a linen cloth 
also behind the statue of Anubis, the golden shrine containing the canopic jars that we have just seen can also be glimpsed. The one object I desperately wanted to see was the golden mask of King Tutankhamun which was on his mummy's face. This is kept in a different room and unfortunately filming was not allowed in that room. But I have included a high definition picture for you to appreciate the beauty of the mask and its exquisite craftsmanship. The treasure room of King Tut had many other precious objects such as necklaces, rings and amulets apart from his two beautiful sarcophagi but I couldn't film in the room. But fortunately the tomb of another pharaoh, Susanis I was also found intact with treasures and his treasures are open to filming. You can have an idea of the precious jewelry buried with a pharaoh after his death. Behold the treasures of King Susanis I. This is the golden funerary mask of King Susanis I. You can see that the craftsmanship is not as great as that of the mask of Tutankhamun. Perhaps the chief goldsmith was not as skilled. This is the innermost coffin of King Susanis. This is a peculiar coffin for a pharaoh. It is made of silver rather than gold. You must know that silver was rarer than gold in ancient Egypt. So Susanis had a grander coffin than Tutankhamun by ancient standards. 
the urius sign that is the cobra on the forehead sign of royalty and authority in ancient egypt and the band on his forehead are of solid gold This goblet is engraved in hieroglyphs with the name of the pharaoh. These are arrowheads and hilts of daggers. This hilt of a dagger is of solid gold. The body of the dagger was perhaps of copper which was destroyed by rust. This hilt is now mounted on a dagger made of fiberglass. This plate was placed on the lower abdomen of the mummy exactly over the incision made to extract the internal organs before mummification. And these are the canopic jars that store the internal organs of the pharaoh. Stones shaped in the form of scarab beetles were popular as amulets in ancient Egypt and numerous have been found. Some bearing the name of the king for whom they were made. I am going downstairs again. I still haven't seen the grand central hall. This is the sphinx of one of the most powerful female pharaohs of ancient Egypt. This is Queen Hatshepsut. In this statue she is shown with a false beard to conform with the tradition's depiction of male pharaohs. Hatshepsut was a strong woman and ruled Egypt for 22 years. Under her rule Egypt prospered and became stronger. She also built great monuments and structures to commemorate her reign. Her funerary temple is one of the most beautiful ancient structures in the world. She also ordered obelisks to adorn the pylons of the Karnak temple in today's Luxor. One of these obelisks still stands. One obelisk cracked during its carving out of the bedrock. This unfinished obelisk still remains in the quarry of Aswan and we shall go to Aswan very shortly to see it. This museum is now over a hundred years old and is overflowing with antiquities. With so many pieces displayed, the curators have left many pieces unlabeled. So we cannot know what the piece represents exactly. By the way, I was worrying that I have been missing my cardio sessions on this tour, but walking around this museum has made it up. This headless statue of some pharaoh reminds me of the numerous decapitated statues in the ancient Hindu temples in India by centuries of attackers. This feminine looking statue is of the most controversial pharaohs of ancient Egypt, Akhenaten. Akhenaten was the father of Tutankhamun and is known for forcing his subjects to worship only one god instead of a pantheon of gods traditionally worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. Akhenaten forced the Egyptians to worship only one god, Aten, represented by the solar disk. He even forced the citizens to move to a new capital, Akhetaten, near today's Amarna village. These are painted panels from the city of Akhenaten, which once adorned his royal palace. Akhenaten was vilified after his death and the people returned to their old religion. Even the art of Akhenaten's time is extraordinary. It breaks all norms of convention in their representation. Unlike the super masculine statues of the pharaohs before him, his statues show him in a bizarre way, with feminine features, protruding belly, and an elongated face. Many stelae have been found in the excavations at Amarna and these show the king Akhenaten and his beautiful wife Nefertiti worshipping Aten, the sun disk, whose rays fall on the royal couple. 
In this panel, the king is playing with one of his daughters, while two other daughters are on the lap of their mother, Queen Nefertiti. Never before and never again would such emotionally charged family scenes be depicted in ancient Egyptian art. Akhenaten's reign was unconventional in every aspect. Love him or hate him, but Akhenaten cannot be ignored in Egyptology. During excavations in Amarna, the capital of King Akhenaten, the ruins of a sculptor's studio were discovered and in it many finished and unfinished sculptures were found. This is an unfinished bust of Akhenaten's wife, Queen Nefertiti, found in the same studio. Fortunately, we have a complete and finished burst of King Nefertiti found in the ruins of the same studio in Amarna. That burst is now in the Egyptian Museum of Berlin. Maybe someday we shall visit Berlin and meet Queen Nefertiti tete a tete. These panels of the royal couple are fascinating. As are these floor panels painted with plants, flowers and birds. This broken panel is perhaps a part of the depiction of nine bows. As we have seen on the footstool of King Tutankhamun, the enemy is shown with his hands tied behind his back. These are the daughters of King Akhenaten who have a similar elongated head like that of their father. This is a very special piece. This shows Akhenaten affectionately kissing her, his daughter as she sits on his lap. There is no other pharaoh in Egyptian history who has so blatantly displayed his love for his family. Akhenaten will truly remain an enigma, a family-loving, affectionate person, a revolutionary and visionary pharaoh or perhaps a villain. It depends upon your perspective. So many pieces are unlabeled in this museum that I was a bit disappointed. I mean, what does this Stella say? And who is this man? No wonder the Egyptian government is building a grand Egyptian museum to accommodate the antiquities from this overflowing building. All these ancient beauties will have a space that they deserve, perhaps restoring the respect that they had in the times they were made. This is Hathor, the cow goddess. Blessing of Pharaoh who is shown between her forelegs. As we all know by now, the ancient Egyptians immensely respected the animals around them, giving most of them the status of god or goddess, even mummifying almost every animal in their sight. This is goddess Tavaret shown in the form of a hippopotamus, but with the legs of a lioness. This is the statue of a scribe, a person who writes documents in ancient Egypt. He is shown writing on a papyrus. We have seen the papyrus room in the last vlog, that is vlog 13.
This is the shrine of the god Horus, the falcon god who keeps an eye on his followers from the sky. This shrine must have adorned the inner sanctum of a temple. We shall visit the great temple of Edfu dedicated to Horus in the coming vlogs. Another statue of the falcon god Horus. Horus was one of the most important gods in ancient Egypt. Another unleveled beautiful statue. Black granite statue of the god of the dead and afterlife, Osiris. Another stella. The face of the pharaoh has been hacked out along with the cartouche bearing his name, perhaps immediately after his death. Who was this pharaoh? Another scribe. Scribes were the heart and soul of the Egyptian civilization. They wrote down legal documents, tax records, magic spells and the happenings in the life of a pharaoh. Basically the scribes are the reason we know the history of ancient Egypt. You must know that there were no public schools in ancient Egypt. Only a special class was taught to read and write. These were the scribes, mainly belonging to the priest class. Everything that is written in hieroglyphs or the later simplified form of hieroglyphs called demotic on the walls of temples and monuments on the pay numerous papyrus scrolls is written by this educated class of priests called scribes. As centuries passed this script and the ancient Egyptian language were forgotten and there remained no person who could read what was written on the great Egyptian monuments and the innumerable papyrus scrolls. It was the monumental work of scholars, especially Jean-Francois Champollion, that we are now able to read this script. And thus the immeasurable hard work of the scribes of ancient Egypt over thousands of years did not fall into oblivion. Ancient Egypt was resurrected back to life. A marble bust of the god Amun. This is a very beautiful life-size statue of the pharaoh Ramesses III being coronated and blessed by the gods Horus and Set. You can recognize Horus easily by his falcon head. The god Set can be recognized by his curved snout. A whole stone pillar from some ancient Egyptian temple has been brought and erected in the museum. Amazing! Look at this enormous statue of King Amenhotep III and his wife Ta, the parents of King Akhenaten. This statue is the centerpiece of the Grand Central Hall. Let me have a look from a distance. The smaller statue between the royal couple is that of their daughter. 
you can have an idea of the enormity of this statue by how small this woman looks in comparison. This statue was originally at the mortuary temple of Amenhotep III at a place called Madinat Habu near Luxor. Two huge sitting statues of the king still remain at the same place. We shall visit the ruins of Amenhotep's temple very soon. This gallery is filled with large statues of ancient pharaohs. Now this is something very extraordinary. Because it is covered in glass, I cannot avoid the reflections while filming, but let me explain what this is. This is the painted floor from the palace of our controversial king Akhenaten. This was discovered by the great archaeologist Flinders Petrie in 1891. Petrie took great pains to carefully reveal this beautiful floor buried in the desert sands of Amarna. And after it was finally revealed, someone smashed it to pieces at night. Imagine this floor remained intact for almost 3300 years and was shattered just 150 years ago. Imagine Petri's frustration. But fortunately, these floor panels were brought to this museum and painstakingly reassembled. We are fortunate enough to see how Akhenaten's palace floor looked when he was the king of all Egypt more than 3300 years ago. This is the topmost stone called a capstone of one of the pyramids at Dahshur near Cairo. We had a distant glimpse of the pyramids of Dahshur in Vlog 10. Another one. These are made of black granite. The luster on these stones hide the fact that these were carved about 4000 years ago. Let us get a wide angle view of the central hall. That ends the two episode tour of this fantastic museum. With so many artifacts on display, what we have seen is only the tip of an iceberg. But it is enough to understand the richness of Egyptian civilization. I shall see you in the next vlog.